Today is Monday, April the 29th, 2013. My name is David Faber, and I'm doing a site analysis for a good buddy of mine, Clint Evans. And this is for hipchickfitness.com. Um, first thing I'm going to say is um, if I hit reload here, uh, notice, well, maybe, maybe you could or maybe you couldn't notice. Uh, I'm going to make this uh, font way bigger here so you can see. Uh, usually I just do speed analyses. Um, on this particular site, I'm going to do a little bit more. Um, it This font looks okay, and I've made it really big. If I start making it smaller, I choose to know if you can see or not. Um, the font starts washing out really bad. It's got lots of pixelization and looks like little echoes. So what I'm going to do is, um, this is far beyond the scope of what I was going to do here. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to right click. I'm in Chrome. Um, actually I'm going to highlight a word and I'm going to right click on it and say inspect element. So I can see what's going on here. Oh, okay, so here's Okay, here there's a couple of problems here. First off, uh, there's a weird color set for the for the uh, font. If we change that to black, um, maybe you can see that. Maybe not. It uh, makes it much more readable. Also, this font here. See if I if I turn off all the fonts there. See the the text becomes much more readable. Now, if I go in here and I edit this, um, if I edit this uh, font information here, okay, trying to get a hold of the font information here. Okay, got it. Uh, now, if I change this to one em uh, Arial, now see how how clear and readable that is. Way, way more readable. So the first thing I'd say about this page is to get rid of this uh, weird font color here. Change this font to black. See here, this has changed it to blue. So you can uh, you can go into Chrome and you can actually do checks like this right on the fly. I would change the color to black. Also, uh, if a person's printing this out, a lot of times a person's printer will change uh, black that's grayed like that to combinations of black and blue, which will just run out their blue ink for no reason. So. First thing, just for readability, I'd say change the um, uh, font color to black and change the uh, font face to, uh, instead of uh, Helvetica new, all this nonsense here with Helvetica, I would take the Helvetica out and just change it to Arial and maybe 1.25 EM. Yeah, so you can see uh, it, the uh, the larger the the font size, um, the more readable it is, and it's usually usually you'll get a smoother font. Um, the edges of the font will be smoother if um, uh, the fonts are specified in EM, so that um, it, it's really complicated to explain. But basically, the geometry of how pages are drawn works in most cases a lot uh, better in um, EMs instead of uh, pixels. All right, so that uh, was uh, different than what I was um, really going to talk about here. But anyway, we'll say first thing is uh, font, number one, font color black. And uh, font family to what was that Arial and uh, Sans Serif or I forget or I'll remember once I see yeah Sans Serif so Arial Sans Serif 
which is uh, right here. And if you do require to use some sort of um, Helvetica-like font, instead of using the Helvetica font, which is available on a person's computer, which might or might not be there, and it might look completely different than you imagine, use a Google font. Uh, and you can go and look up uh, uh, Google fonts to see how to do that. So sans serif. Okay, uh, third thing. Let's just uh, glance at the step behind the curtain here and look and see what uh, fonts being or what uh, themes being used. This is using an old, um, the old uh, 2011 theme, which has some really uh, challenging. Um, has some challenges with um, uh, showing up correctly on responsive devices, which are a responsive theme is a theme that shows up on any phone or tablet or laptop or big screen uh, monitor or big screen TV, uh, all the way up to um, a 4x5 projection system. It, it just all works. So I would recommend also that um, uh, these guys, uh, Clint, I'd recommend you change to 2012 and um, that may give you a little bit better um, presentation on um, uh, different types of mobile devices. Uh, also this nonsense here, SEO Pack 2, I got no idea what that is, but look at all this nonsense that it uh, puts in here. Um, Oh, that's uh, put in by What's Up. Uh, it looks like this is the only thing put in by All in One SEO Pack. Um, you're probably better off just uh, using something that um, uh, edits the meta keywords independently of uh, a plugin. No reason really to use another plugin. It's just something else to break. Uh, I just know what to. Oh. You know, what's interesting is that um, you guys are using this WhatsApp system and there's a lot of stuff being put in here and there's a lot of uh, this, see this set time thing here? Set time, set timer, okay, that's probably all right. I'm unsure what the effect on uh, speed or throughput is going to be with all this uh, gobbledygook in here. So if there's a speed challenge when we look at your... Um, speed analysis, I would uh, turn off what's up first and retest your uh, speed analysis and if uh, this speed dramatically improves then find something different than uh, this uh, what's up is a, uh, it's a uh, performance monitor system. All right, uh, last two quick checks. Uh, we're going to look at the HTML. And there's only a couple of errors, except one of them is really bad. Um, you really got to fix this. Uh, the H group, that's really to my knowledge this is incorrect unless the W3 standard is changed. It may be that H groups have been replaced completely now by uh, the header tag which is probably correct. So this H group probably you'll have to scrape through the theme and this is probably also a, a problem with the theme. Uh, if you upgrade the theme this probably just is fixed autom automatically. Is uh, This is probably automatically converted to so H group so uh, theme update is going to fix uh, responsiveness uh, device support and uh, also is going to probably fix fix the H group to header tag conversion what was the other one oh um, uh, remove or uh, uh, temporarily disable uh, was up if there are any uh, performance challenges. 
Uh, this other one here, there is no such thing as a center tag anymore. There hadn't been for years. Uh, that has to be handled in CSS. If you use the center tag, most browsers will try to compensate for that. Um, but you should really get rid of it. Uh, this is just a warning here. Um, just find wherever this script and language uh, equal JavaScript is. It may be a theme file or a, um, this may be spit out by the header file that goes along, the header.php that goes along with the theme. So if um, if the theme is updated, this probably uh, this warning disappears too, and that way you'll get a clean uh, HTML test. So now let's look at the CSS. Uh, oh dear. I don't know what all this stuff is, but it's going to certainly slow down. Uh, hmm. All right, uh, I'm just going uh, to say uh, to um, fix HTML to be error free. And the same with the CSS. And I'm going to suggest that, uh, Clint, if you take a look at the first case study I did on Ezra's site, I walk through how to fix all this. Uh, some of this is seriously broken. Um, this first thing here, uh, this this is seriously broken. And again, this is 2011. When you change to 2012, that'll fix that. So really, it's just really out of change to 2012, first off, before you do anything else and retest all this. Um, for all this nonsense, these are all vendor prefixes. This uh, dash moz, dash webkit, uh, and that is all fixed by using the technique I talk about in Ezra's video, which is using the uh, uh, modernizer.com uh, shim library. And you can clean up your uh, CSS by fixing your, uh, upgrading your uh, theme and your um, fixing your CSS. That should uh, give you clean, um, using modernizer, that should give you clean uh, CSS there. All right. Let's get on to the speed analysis. So we'll highlight the check here, or the link, and we'll go to, oh, I, in fact, I already did this. Um, let's just pull up, um, let's see, here. here is the uh, www, oh. Let's do a test of um, so that we're doing a test. This is of the bear domain, which is hip chick fitness, and this uh, test is of the uh, www, the subdomain. All right, so let's take a look here. And the way you use web uh, page test.org is you just once you run your website through this uh, tester, you just um, look for two main things. One is the the uh, scores up here; they should be all A's. Uh, it looks like uh, it, well, you just have to click on these and show how to fix those, and it tells you exactly how. My guess is that uh, Clint for this domain is using some uh, stupidly broken hosting site like um, uh, Bluehost or HostGator that's just uh, ridiculous uh, about how they configure servers. So fixing static content means that um, there are, are configurations you can do in your web server so that if somebody loads an image, for example, that image isn't going to change. I mean, if you've got, a, if you've got an image, for example, of um, uh, let's bring Let's bring this site up here again. Yeah, 
if you've got an image here, oh, uh, one other thing here, this tell us your, your goal, uh, Clint, personally, I would get rid of that because uh, I noticed um, when I came to this site, first off, I looked at this. Boy, is this taking a long time. Uh, first off, that's ugly. Um, next off, um, it appears maybe it's even broken now. This takes me completely out of the flow. You want people reading your content and taking action on your content. So if you have some sort of like uh, poll or questionnaire or something or that you'd like somebody to answer, put that in line so that it's a natural flow of the site. This appears to be broken, so we're going to skip it right now. Um, so hip chick fitness, let's see. So this um, is some kind of font. Mm, we're going to look at that a little bit here in a minute. But anyway, there appears to be um, uh, some images, a whole bunch of images, by the way, which are... Yeah, uh, so basically what you're looking for, Clint, right here is instead of 0 out of 100, you're looking for 100 out of 100, 100 out of 100, 100 out of 100. So um, uh, this is going to, you know, you're going to pay a pretty significant penalty on speed um, for having no... Um, uh, date stamp. So basically, the, this is saying that there's no date stamp on this uh, image. So this clints 2ping it's doubtful if that file will ever change. Uh, if it does, um, uh, what I normally do in my images is like clints 2 ping I'll name that 2012-12-31-clints 2 ping And if I ever have to change it, I'll just change it to like 2013-04-29. In other words, actually change the name of the file. Uh, and then for the ex the uh, timestamp or the date stamp on this, I tell the web server to say this file isn't going to change in 10 years. And basically what that means is the um, if the file gets uh, downloaded once, if somebody visits the site once, uh, and they revisit the site, then that file clints.ping, clints2.ping, uh, is cached on the um, client's browser side. So it instantaneously presents because it's already on the the person's uh, local machine instead of having to go after it on the server. And then uh, this compressed file transfer, that's all these things, Clint. Uh, you're looking for 100 out of 100 here, too. And it looks like this entire website, there is no uh, gzip compression turned on. Uh, that That's a big challenge. Again, if you're using something like um, HostGator or Bluehost or somebody like that where you don't have any control over it, uh, you may have to go into some kind of uh, PHP cache or uh, plugin or something to to uh, mess around with that. I just enable it on my server so all my pages are gzip. Now this is really bad. First byte time uh, is way, way too long. First byte time, zero out of a hundred. I don't know what this, what the target is, but this is like almost four seconds. And if we look at the detail view here of this site, um, So if you look here, you can see the colors. DNS lookup. This is how long it took to look at took it look to look up the um, site. Initial connection. This is how long the client browser and the the server where the content lives took to negotiate a conversation. And then all this green time. Good lord, who knows what that's for? Um, basically, that's um, the web hosting service uh, rumbling around the guts of the web server trying to get content off a disk into memory and down the the uh, internet connection from the server to the browser. Um, so contrast that time with, um, let's look at uh, crazy fast websites here. Uh, 
All right. Now let's just uh, compare these two together a little bit. Uh, DNS lookup. Uh, so here's DNS lookup. Here's the connection time, and then the the time to first byte. The first byte started at 150 milliseconds, and Clint, your server is starting at almost four full seconds, not milliseconds. This is 4,000 milliseconds, and mine's starting uh, at um, 150. And the entire content of my website is serving, see this little green bar here from uh, from here to here? Is serving in uh, 0.05 seconds. And it's kind of hard to tell because this, this blue here is uh, how long that it really takes. Um, so that's kind of lost in the noise, but basically this green line here, this is the killer. So you got to get rid of that green line, whatever, what, whatever is causing this time. If you're using um, WordPress, uh, it may be that that's something with uh, database tuning that's off. More than likely it's something on the server tuning that's off. But anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's got to get stopped. Um, now this is interesting here. It looks like Okay, those are two different style sheets. Boy, these style sheets are taking a long time to send down the pipe, too. This is, uh, so, 3.7 to 4.7. These things are taking, like, one second apiece. And they can't be that big. Let's just uh, take a look at these. So here's the style sheet. I mean, if it's not compressed, I, I mean, it's kind of big, but still shouldn't take one second, even if it's completely uncompressed, to come down the pipe. If you look here at um, my style sheets, you can see just how freakishly fast they're coming across, which is uh, 0.2 to 0.3, something like 0.7. Um, uh, 0.7 seconds, so maybe. Uh, oh, okay. So I guess it's saying over here to the side what it is. So, so this total part of the transaction took uh, 216 milliseconds for the uh, web content to download, 67 milliseconds for this uh, CSS file, and see all these CSS files: uh, one and a half seconds, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2. These are all 1.2 seconds one second for this JavaScript file. So I suspect that there's something, um, since these files, the CSS and JavaScript files, and let's see what this file is. This is a ping image. And this is a fav icon, which is going to be incredibly small. That's taken um, a second. So basically there's something badly wrong with um, the overall web server configuration here. It's not MySQL, it's not uh, PHP, it's something with the actual configuration of the web server. And more than likely the only way to fix that is to change hosting companies. So Clint, if you could tell me where this is um, and let me know, I'll be sure and tell people never go to that hosting company. Um, I mean that's I mean, fixing your web web serving speed and having all green up here, uh, having A's for all these, um, and any any correctly configured web server, uh, you're going to get all A's here anyway. The, all it, you, your your images are already compressed and keep lives on, so all you really got to be concerned with is first byte, which is the problem with the web server speed. Compressed images and content being cached should be automatically infect for in effect for any sensibly configured web server. All right, so um, let's uh, compare the www version of this website and see what it looks like. Um, oh, okay, we were looking at the www. Now we're looking at the bare domain, which is um, so www versus bare domain means no www or anything else in front of it, no subhosts or 
um, uh, anything dot domain. Now what's interesting here is, and this is something that really has to be fixed, um, so item number seven, seven is web server uh, config is broken. Change to fast hosting company. And then number eight, um, one thing I notice here that is uh, incorrect is uh, typically what you'll probably, it's probably best to do is redirect www to the bare domain. And so for example, um, let's, uh, let's do a check here for web. I guess I ought to keep a copy of this link someplace so I can quickly refer to it. What I'm doing is I'm doing a web test against uh, the www version of my primary domain. And if you look here, you'll see that www is redirecting. So this is the DNS lookup here and then there's a connection time and then there's the time to serve the content so at the end of 430 milliseconds there's a 301 redirect here and that goes to the bare domain so that means there's really only one place that content is served from and that's the bare domain here the way your server is um, set up Clint You're actually serving content off of both the www and the bare domain. Now it may be the same content, but having that type of uh, web server configuration may cause some uh, serious challenges if uh, uh, Google changes the way they uh, index content in the future. It's in in essence, it's really better to take any subdomain. And uh, redirect it to the to the bare domain if the subdomain is just an alias, which www is just an alias for the bare domain. And then if we look here at all the CSS files and JSS and the JavaScript files, <clears throat> we're seeing the same thing. They're all 1.2 milliseconds. So the biggest win on this uh, site. Um, is simply to fix the web server configuration and I'd say that that just doing that is probably going to take it down to I mean I'm just guessing here but you may even get sub one second response time just for having a correctly configured host so I'm going to say that that's probably far enough to go at this point uh, fix fix these uh, uh, seven items oh let's see the redirect is the eighth item redirect uh, www to bare domain so I've got a checklist of uh, eight items here on on this and if you fix those eight items the number one item being to fix the web server configuration then you'll probably get sub one second um, response time